This is part 16 of rebuilding a large old twin cylinder steam engine and on this one I will be making some more cylinder head studs and refitting the eccentric rods. Making the cylinder head studs is an easy if not tedious and boring job and at this point I must say that when you file in the lathe be very careful and make sure that you have a proper handle on the file. And here I'm making sure that all the nuts are tight to hold the cylinder heads firmly to the cylinders. Just in case anyone has noticed, the two innermost studs, the ones that are closest together and the ones that I'm currently tightening, are longer than the rest of the studs and this is intentional. What I'm going to do is fit a tie strap between the two cylinders to give them a little bit more support. There's not much more to do now but what there is to do is clean up the eccentrics. These are terrible, they're very badly made like a lot of the parts of this engine and they've taken quite a lot of cleaning up, they were rusty and there are some deep tool marks in there too. Originally they were painted but I do not like painted rods because the paint only chips and looks very unsightly after a short while. So it's a repeat process, I'm using my little mini drill with a drum sander to get through the deep part of the damage and then I use some medium sandpaper followed by fine sandpaper and somewhere in between I'm using a needle file to draw file the really deep damage. Someone has previously draw filed these rods using far too coarse a file and not cleaning the file properly. Draw filing is an art within itself and it's always worth remembering not to take too much metal away because you can take metal away very easily but it's much more difficult to put it back. Well the eccentric rods are a lot better than they used to be so it's now time to refit them to the engine. This is a very fiddly job and I have actually dropped several of these small nuts on the floor. I'll find them later. I'm using a pair of surgical forceps to hold the nuts but as soon as I get a purchase on the nut I'll then use a spanner. Do not rely on small pairs of pliers or surgical forceps to hold the nut while you tighten the bolt side. If you do this the nut's likely to spin in the pliers or forceps and will be badly marked and this looks terrible. These small surgical forceps are really useful in the workshop. I use them all the time for holding small parts. I have a few sets of these and I bought them from eBay. I have a few sets because I'm always losing them on the bench. My workshop is always a bit messy. I do work in a state of organised chaos. Generally I do know where everything is so I don't spend much time hunting for tools and I also don't spend too much time tidying up the workshop. Here I'm completing fitting the second eccentric strap to the engine. I'm only doing one side of the engine. What I'm going to do is get one side of the engine to run perfectly well on its own set the timing and everything. Then I'll move over to the other side. So I do not want any eccentric rods at all on the other side yet. I'm using a couple of iron rivets to temporarily hold the eccentric rods onto the expansion link. But what I'm going to do is make some proper studs with this piece of eighth steel that I've been waving about. When I first saw this engine I was quite appalled to see that the only thing holding the eccentric rods onto the expansion link were these soft iron nail things which were no good at all, in fact one had bent and it was fouling one of the arms. So I'm going to do it properly and make proper studs with a 4BA nut at each side. Checking the movement of the expansion link shows that everything is fine, nothing's binding and it's very smooth. These are the two side rails that move the expansion link and they were originally held on with just a 2BA bolt but I'm going to make some studs and do it properly rather than just use the threads of the 2BA bolt as a bearing surface. I haven't decided what to do about the inlet and exhaust yet. I think I'm going to have to fabricate them from copper. I was originally going to use a pair of 5 8 diameter brass tubes, but because of the alignment of the inlets, as you can see here, that's not going to work. This is the original inlet, and this doesn't even fit. You have to actually gouge out part of the cylinder cladding to allow it to fit the engine. I may make an improved version of this. At least I can then disguise the fact that the two flanges will not be in the same place on the steam chests. Yes, it's really horrible. 
Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.